All right. Welcome. Just going to wait for a few folks to get here. The meeting will begin in about oh, five minutes. Relax. If you haven't checked out Spatial yet, S-P-A-T-I-A-L dot I-O, give it a shot. Sign in now. Get a jump start on the program. Make sure if you have a camera and a microphone that it is on. If you want to take advantage of the avatar feature. Just settle it in and get ready to go. My name is James. This is the way I usually start meetings, just with a little music, get in the right headspace. We're going to have notes in the chat. Hopefully, we'll get some people in here pretty soon. Join us. And SUHSD teacher prep week. Strong. You're listening to some side streets, lo fi jazz, hip hop, chill beats. While we wait. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Hope you enjoy the presentation. Going to go live in about five minutes. Again, we're going to start up in about two minutes. Hey, it's Matthew. Hello, Matthew. Just Hi, James. Hello. Hi. Am I the only one here yet? <laughs> You're the only one here. You're an early bird. Uh, okay. Is it 115? Let me see. Let me just... Yeah. I usually... Uh, 
I usually have a little music go and let everybody get in and uh, see what's happening. How are you doing? Okay. I'm doing well. I'm up in the Sierras right now. So. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm just yeah. getting all my, this. I'm only doing like one session and, uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. <clears throat> So, yeah, my session this morning was canceled because they were out of power in Monterey, I guess. Oh, is that what happened? I was yeah. wondering. I saw on the schedule that there was some issue there. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Well, did you get to sign up for something else? Could you jump into a different one? Or I think I realized it too late, and I think they, they took off uh, the um, options after the time. Uh, maybe I was yeah. wrong, but... I was... I was thinking about jumping into one or two that was offered earlier. I had uh, um, some some crazy news lately. Uh, everything you know uh, with with pandemic and everything. Everyone's um, everyone's got so many different stories to tell, and I'm just I'm I'm waiting to see how we can learn from each other. And after this whole time and getting back in the swing, and now the year that we've sort of uh, jumped in the deep end after a full pandemic um i think this year is going to be reflective i think it's i'm looking forward to it i think that um, hopefully the students have a have a good vibe coming in and that's the the, the area that we create for them is going to be positive you know that's that's yeah. really super important but um we're going to jump into it here it's 115 i have um the uh perfunctory and obligatory slideshow. I'd like to talk a little bit about where I'm coming from on this whole approach. I don't know if a lot of people don't know me, but uh, I'm going to put a thing up and just kind of run through the usual norms and things. Um, people call me James, um, and my last name is Nichols. I teach at Salinas High School. And if anybody would like to just kind of hop and popcorn after that and tell me what they teach and online, we can maybe even type it in the chat if you're if you're shy about going on camera you can maybe put your mic on it and say hello to the group um we have one two three four five six seven i thought there might be a couple more i thought there may be around 15 but we'll see how many people have uh, kind of lost steam in the afternoon sometimes that happens but i totally get it um this is going to be a different experience i think for most of you um but again, let's popcorn around. Maybe Matt can kick us off with uh, who you are and where you where you do most of your work and what is that work. Thank you, Elizabeth. Sure, I'm Matthew England. Uh, I am currently teaching at El Sassol Middle School, uh, seventh grade science. I love the middle school. I was actually I'm classically trained middle school teacher. That was my major in um, in college back in the day. It was middle nice. school education and uh, good old Eastern Illinois University. I should have mentioned that too. Maybe if you could say where you went to the school too. Yeah, UC Santa Cruz. Okay, yep. that's great. Uh, love the campus. Who wants yeah. to go next? How about Stephanie? Let's cut through this super quick so I can get a handle on who we are and where we're coming from, and then we'll jump right into things and I'll I'll go with the slides. Hello, I typed in the chat, but I'll just say it as well. I'm Steph, I'm at Everett Alvarez. I teach dimensional art and art one too. All right, a real artist here, a fine artist. I love it. And uh, I'm gonna admit a couple more people here that are jumping in. Um, my dad is a classically trained fine artist and illustrator. Um, he went to uh, the Ringling School of Art down in Florida, in Sarasota, and I kind of grew up in the art world, and we can talk about that later maybe. I think it's, everybody has a little story behind that part of their life. They would like to talk and share. That'd be great, too. How about Elizabeth? Hi, ah, you got to take your thing off mute, and then we're all set. I still I still can't hear you, Miss Barron. I'm sorry. There we go. I think that might be better. She can type it in. Okay. Double screen going on. Um, am I sharing something else or no? I don't think so. Okay. Um, let's just run down the thing. That's cool, Megan. I, I'm seeing people are typing it in. Um, Good afternoon. My name is Megan Lundeen. I am at La Paz Middle School. This is my third year 
and I teach English 7 and yearbook. Awesome. This is a great way for you to collect and, uh, you know, post up work and document your work and things like that that we're going to be looking at. That's great. Um, how about Jalissa? Or, or Jalissa? I'm sorry, where do I put the syllables? Oh, it's um, Jalissa. Jalissa, thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Jalissa Navarrete. I'm also at La Paz Middle School as a paraeducator. Awesome. Awesome. I love the middle school kids. I love the middle school. Um, let's see. Mio? Hi, my name is Mio Nishimura, and I teach Japanese at Alison High School. Okay. Kids are going to get into this with the Japanese foreign language and stuff. Excellent. Uh, Martha? Hi, I'm Martha Arevalo. I'm, um, I'm the work experience coordinator over at Salinas High School. Ah, good. Nice to meet you. We'll see you later. I work at Salinas High too, room 301. And uh, welcome, welcome. Branson, how are you doing? We're jumping in, just talking a little bit about where we work and what we do. Maybe where you went to school. Hi there, uh, Branson Cowan. Uh, Everett Alvarez High School, education specialist uh, for special ed. Um, where did I go to school? Uh, I went to um, Palo Alto High School. Home oh, of Vikings. Oh, I went to Tino. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm glad to be out of the Bay Area and down here where the weather is just perfect. Anyway, yeah. Palo Alto is not bad. Um, nice. Nice to meet you, Branson. Welcome. Um, if nice technology you. is your thing, um, you're in the right spot here. Been doing a little bit, and uh, we're going to take you on a little journey here. Sarah, how about Sarah Blake? Hi, my name is Sarah Blake. I am an ALB teacher at Washington Middle School. I've been here for 12 years. I'll be teaching seventh grade ALB this year, and I went to Monterey High School. Cool. Could you tell me what the the uh, the the letters mean there? The a oh alb academic language development oh language okay alb okay i got you yeah alb or all um in the district uh-huh perfect who am i missing did we get back to elizabeth how are we doing let's try this one more time you got it yeah sorry that ha sometimes happens when i have a dual screen um, my name is Elizabeth. I work at Alice Hall High. I'm also an education specialist. This year, I'll be working with juniors. And high school, I went to Alvarez. And for college, I went to uh, CSU Nordrich. And then I did my master's and credential through CSUMB. Oh, that's awesome. Who, who am I missing? Did we get, did we get everybody? Oh, good. Um, I'm, I'm Rachel. Oh, Rachel. I, um, I teach dance and PE this year. I've kind of ping ponged around where they need me. And so I'll be teaching dance and PE at Rancho San Juan. Okay. And this is my eighth year in the district. And I am from Fremont, California. I went to American High and I went to CSU Chico for both my undergrad and my graduate degrees. Chico. I was headed to Chico. If I didn't go east of the Mississippi, I was headed right to Chico. I love that place. Great Thanks. campus. Um, anyone else? Somebody just pop in and out. Maybe we'll we'll get to them. Any, anybody we miss? I'm Nancy Ward. Nancy. Okay. I'm at North Salinas High School, and I teach social studies. Okay. Awesome. Hey, okay, great. Is everybody comfortable? You do not have to have your webcam on for this whole thing if you don't want to. It makes me comfortable to have it on. I'm. I have a a master's degree in online learning. So I'm kind of used to like having my webcam on and stuff like that. The The whole thing of this is to have you get comfortable in a sort of a metasphere, in a space that's 3D. Um, how, if you play games, um, if you're a gamer and you understand the W, A, D, X on your, key, on your keyboard, you can navigate around that way. I just want to kind of put up a couple of things. I'm going to show you guys a slide on how to sign in and everything too. I'm going to, I think, put a link to that in the chat if you guys are good with that. That way we can all, of course, you know, get paid and be comped for our, our time. And the slide thing is going to be, oops, here it goes. Copy that link and paste it right here. Um, boom. Again, my name is James. If you have a question, just shout James. 
Um, uh, stop me anytime, please. Um, un unmute your mic if you want to uh, shout out a question. If you don't have your mic on, you can. I think there's a there's a link there. Can everybody see the link? Uh, hopefully, is that working? Um, it says welcome. Hold on. Maybe that it's not a real link. Let's see. Let me try that again. Can everybody see what I'm trying to do here? Um, okay, there's the welcome thing. I shared that link and it should be. And uh, let me try that one more time. That should be better. Um, I'm sorry about that, everybody. Um, that's how you're gonna see my, my super sophisticated slideshow. Feel free to make a copy for yourself. Um, you just go to file, make a copy. I see that people are popping in on that right now. Um, I'm going to um, go through that with you if you're looking at it. I don't like to read slideshows to people, especially because you could just copy the whole thing. But definitely hit the sign in link um, first thing and give me a make sure you sign in in order to get paid. And then I just want to advance to the second one on my screen. It's just seven P's of collaboration. What we're doing is we're putting ideas on the table, paying attention to ourselves and others, basic stuff, pausing. Um, sometimes I do ask for people to paraphrase, like, what would you do in this situation? Please don't feel like thinking I'm putting you on the spot in any way. And if you don't feel comfortable, um, you know, talking in a group like this, it's okay, really. My name is James. We kind of did this. I was going to do uh, the third slide here. I'm not presenting it. I'm assuming that you're just kind of following along on slide three with me, but um, I can present. Um, I'm going to be presenting the actual uh, when we start getting into it, um, which is the very next sl slide. I like to keep things simple, as you can see, and also um, kind of keeping my eye on fashion. Orange is really in right now this summer, so we're going with orange. Uh, and Slide four says, let's get into it, okay? If you're interested in getting a new spatial account, which I'm hoping that you are, and that's why you're here, go ahead and hit the start page on the fourth slide, and we can start there. And I'm gonna actually present to you um, my gallery, the one that, my personal gallery, and then I'm also going to show you while you're signing up, I'm going to be presenting um, on the screen, um, an art gallery that I did with a couple of the other graphic design teachers, Ruby Sprangle and um, Jennifer Gaston and Scott Rose and some other people also contributed to that. So that was smart to tech. Uh, didn't seem like, okay. So that's a side conversation. Cool, you guys are going. That's fine. I'm trying to keep an eye on everything. Again, if I'm going too fast, shout at me. Just say, hey, um, I'm okay with that. When we start really getting into it and uploading pictures and stuff like that, it's going to take us maybe a breakout time, 20 minutes just to play, where I'm going to be quiet and let you guys work and explore. Um, and it is, for those of us that are techie, it's kind of point and click and kind of figure it out. It's very, um, the UI, the user user experience is is as simple as it could possibly get. Um, while you guys are on the start page and maybe signing up, I'm going to go ahead and present what my um, my gallery looks like um, on the big screen here. So I'm going to share now a, um, a window, and whoop, there it is. So this is my gallery, and I'm as you guys sign up, I would like to just sort of walk you through. Um, what I've put together as an example of some of the work and digital work that I've done and some that I've bought, some that I've, you know, um, helped students make and some that uh, is uh, is just kind of out there. Hopefully we can, can we see that? Um, okay. Now, as I walk through, I can turn. Can you guys see that okay? It might be a little bit glitchy. But as I'm walking through the gallery, this is what this is what a curated gallery sh I'm I'm thinking should kind of look like. But there are other examples. Thank you, Rachel. I appreciate the input. And what I'm going to do is sort of 
if you want to get in and sort of look at your own as well as this, that would be fine. But I'm going to show you how I get started and how I upload stuff and what sort of features are on board here so that it'll, it'll bridge the gap and give you a quicker um, a sort of up, up time, upstart time. Now, so um, again, this is spatial. I have an account. I have a premium account. Um, I got a premium account because I wanted to host a whole bunch of people inside of a gallery uh, to have our um, end of the year sort of um, gala. And I didn't want people from the outside world coming in and kind of, you know, uh, messing around in our in our playground. So there's a few tricks that I'm going to lay out later on in the session that are going to show you what those features are. But I'm going to start off with the most basic features and, and sort of show you how to jump around and navigate. So the wheel kind of gets you in and out. If you have a wheel mouse, if you wheel in, you can you can sort of zoom in and zoom out. That's very helpful. If you um, then click down on your left, click and spin, click and drag is how you spin through things. And up and down, you can get perspective that way as well. Um, you can motivate through by using your W, A, D, and X. And again, I'm just doing a quick demo on this to show you sort of how to get around. So by walking around, if you have a decent computer, and I believe even a Chromebook, this will work okay. Um, and again, if you're having trouble or if I'm glitching out on you, or if you're having any issues, please put it in the chat box because not we're not all dealing with the same kind of computer or the same speeds and stuff like that. Anyway. This is, for instance, um, two pieces of art that I have on the wall here. One of them is an animation. The other one is basically a, a picture of a, a tiger with a cowboy hat on. But all of these pictures and things have information embedded into them. So um, those of you familiar with the, the NFT community or the, the people that make art for sale for cryptocurrency, are very familiar with this kind of work and you can actually house all of your your work and your your, your investments or your <laughs> bad investments as a case may be right here in the gallery so people other people can see it but it's also good for family photos it's also good for um things like that so that's what i'm going to focus on first is just like what is what can we do with this thing and how can you how can you make things um more interesting for your students basically okay so when if i leave this gallery i come on to the jump on space okay i can explore galleries and tell me if i'm not still presenting the same window i believe i am but uh, i think so yeah okay you can explore what other people have done in their galleries um you can create a team um to put together different pieces of work that other people can edit for example this one right here is the digital um, one that we put together across the district for different classes. So what we did is we just put a shared folder together in the Google Drive and different teacher. There's Miss Gaston right there. Somebody did a low poly of her. And this is a good example, too, because you have these um, jump off spaces, these little hubs here. I think they call them a portal is the real name for this. So I can jump right from portal to portal, and you can actually put these portals in. You can add portals. Um, you can I can share my screen with across the group to other people, and we're going to get into that in a minute. We can put up notes. We can search or find something, right? So for example, I'm editing this gallery, and um, I like to go. I'm going fast. I tend to go fast. Um, but I like to go top to bottom, left to right. That's the way most of us go. So that's what I'm going to do. These these features over here are basically your camera and mic. So if you were going to have a meeting with somebody, you turn on your web camera, you turn on your microphone, and we're going to get a chance to do a breakout room, see if it happens uh, later on. I only have two hours. It's going to go by incredibly fast. Um, so why don't we do this? Can I can I get everybody to to take a minute, take a deep breath? Type in the chat box, do you have an account? Did you sign up with Google? Uh, yes or no? Um, were you able to 
to hit that uh, that second slide and get in there and uh, navigate around. Okay. Okay, great, Megan. Rachel's getting in there. Um, and depending on the computer that you're using, um, you sign it in with Google. Exactly right. Perfect. That's what I would do. Um, that's the easiest way to do it. That way everything's kind of, you have access to your stuff. It might take a second. We're going to take a minute. Maybe we can take about a, a five minute pause and I can just kind of walk around the gallery and show you what, what we've done. Um, if you're just customizing your avatar, students love that part of it. Okay. I usually dedicate a whole hour of my class when I introduce them to this. I'm like, customize your avatar, go crazy, do it. That way you have buy-in, especially with the middle school kids. They're just gonna, they're gonna go crazy with their avatars. And um, the way I see it, you know, um, as long as you're motivating around the class, you can see what's going on. They should be, they should be okay with it. Oh, they're gonna eat it up. Um, the only drawback is is if you have glitchy technology, you know, that's that's really it's it's a problem across the district. But uh, this is not affiliated with Meta. No, it's not at all. Um, this is free. Uh, everybody can make as many free galleries as they want. Um, you can make your galleries private. We're going to get into a little bit about that here later on too i'm gonna i'm gonna take a lot of questions because if people have a lot of questions and yeah i don't even have a facebook account I, I yeah i'm whatever that's a different story but anyway my my i have spoken okay so the story behind this is that i was poking around in twitter and listening to some twitter spaces about art and about digital art and stuff and because that's what I do, I teach graphic design, uh, Selena Sai. And these two guys came on and started talking about this space in, in Twitter on a live spaces. And I actually got a chance to speak with, you know, the founders of the company um, and the head representative. And um, they just had such a great outlook about it having it be free for everybody and then having the next level be you know being able to moderate very specifically but you know for families to share their family pictures or to share um you know a private gallery or whatever um i think it's just a cool place there are other places too there's a lot of other metasphere types places coming up you've heard of maybe sandbox maybe you've heard of um there's there's a bunch of them, but I can I can talk about that maybe in the next hour. The first hour I was going to be just showing, and then the second hour we're going to take a break, and then we're going to be doing. So I'm going to have you all get into a space, make a space, upload a couple pictures, and then share your space. Basically, that's the whole that's the whole long and short of it today, and it's a two hour deal because um, you're going to need to access some pictures. Maybe you have some on your desktop. It doesn't really matter what they are. Um, it takes all kinds of um, data. There's a limit. I think it's 200 megabytes or something. It's huge. It's a big amount um, that you can put on there. All of this that I have on there, I was able to do for free. All of the art, all of the, the pictures and the movies and the different uh, portals and linking back and forth, I was able to do for free. Um, and then the the help page is very, very good too. There's a whole bindle of help that I'm gonna show you probably at the end and give you links to that you, you may or may not be already familiar with that the help, the question mark on the very bottom is the most brilliant thing that they've ever done because you can tell, you can say, we have a ROP class that teaches, Mr. Booth teaches uh, video game design. Well, they work in a, a program called Unity. This was built in Unity. This was built in, and you can build your own versions of this and then upload it as an atmosphere or a, uh, a, uh, a space. So what these are are just um, blocks of three-dimensional information that they're giving you to, to play in, basically, like a, like a sandbox sort of atmosphere. Let's take another 
a temperature test. Let's take a temperature. How are we doing so far? Um, you can walk through walls. You can you can jump around. You can click on a picture and get information. Um, again, this is the stuff that you're seeing here is stuff that we did this year. All these little animations and things like that. These are just looped out animations. These happen to be for my students, but uh, you can actually get a copy of these. You can right click, copy, paste and stuff like that on there. And hopefully people are starting to get their their feet wet in in their own gallery, maybe. Um, I'm hoping by now, by right about by 145, I'm hoping that that people are maybe have me minimized and say, OK, I'm off to the races here. I'm going to try to add something. So that's kind of where we're going to be going in the next you know, half hour, uh, 45 minutes until the end of the hour and a half or whatever we have. Any questions so far? I'm going to I'm going to stop sharing just for a second and pop back into the real the real world. And I think I'm here. What What do you think about that? Are you guys clicking around and doing stuff right now? How do you share out your go? OK, great. So what you're going to what you're going to do when you're ready to share out, there's just um, if I'm going to my gallery, you have to go to your your avatar on the top right. There's a little profile plus picture, I think. You click on that one, and then you can invite them by email. Make sure you have anyone with the link, or you can say you can have an editor. There's a can view can. It's kind of like a Google document sharing scheme. I on mine, I I have created a group of people that I of artists that I work with. So the, you saw my personal gallery. That was something called Gallery Obtuse, which is a part of a bigger set of studios called Incidental Studios. So we have a bunch of different galleries in our studio, uh, art studio. <laughs> so you can also invite users, right? There's a capacity of 50 people. Um, and on the share thing, there's an overflow group. And there's also, for me, it's host settings and overflow group. But I think that's what I'm actually paying for as well. Good question. Stephanie's getting her avatar together. Great. And then what I thought we would do is, if you all have an avatar or whatever, um, we could all jump into the one gallery and we can just, I would I would like to, before we get moving on, just meet up in one gallery, like say the, the gallery that I, that I was just showing you, I'm going to give you the address to that gallery so that we can, um, we can meet in there and I can see what you've done with your, uh, avatars see what you guys look like and then uh there's some shortcuts that you can do to do some dancing around and waving and give hearts and likes and thumbs up and thumbs down if you're having a meeting or a conference or something like that we'll get into a little bit of that too so if anybody wanted to join me in this gallery that students have put together and take a look at what some of the students work is done. I do not have my camera or my mic on in the gallery for obvious reasons, because I think I'd get a bunch of feedback while I'm presenting here on Google Classroom. But I'm going to be in this gallery sort of looking for people. Why don't we take five or 10? <laughs> Why don't we take 10? And at 2 o'clock, we'll start visiting each other's galleries and posting up uh, links to each other's gallery. But what I would like to do is meet you guys all here in the student gallery that I have put, put a link on. And then you could even later on put a portal in your gallery linking to this gallery. Huh. Yeah, it's wild. You can do all kinds of stuff like that. So. How about let's take five? I see Ms. London is here. Hopefully I got your name right. I'm bad with the syllables sometimes. And I'm hiding way in the back, so you're going to have to come and find me. Uh, 
I'm hiding. So yeah, maybe let's, I'm gonna, yeah. Well, let's take five. When you get your avatar together, let's hit that spatial space and come on over and meet me, find me, play hide and seek in my little gallery. And then in the meantime, if you get there early, please look around and check out the student art. How about that? And anyone that needs to maybe go to the bathroom or get a drink of water or whatever, we can do that. I'm gonna be sitting here. If you have a question or a concern or comment, please uh, let me know. I'm not going to go anywhere. We'll just take five minutes or seven minutes until a uh, little bit before two and see if we can all meet here at this gallery. Meet ya. Meet you here. Somebody's here. Oh, I see you. Hello. I'm waving at you. Can you see me? Who is that over there with the white jacket on? Oh, that's me. <laughs> Hi. I'm waving at you. Can you see me? I'm trying to figure out how to move around in here. <laughs> okay. So if you click and drag on, on the floor with your mouse, just left click and drag, you can, you oh. can spin around in circles, then if you would like, you can use the W, A, D, X. So if I do W or A and D, or pardon me, A and D, I can go back and forth. There you go. Oh, you just took off. So just navigating around takes a second. Hello. And I can, I can give you a dance move. No? <laughs> okay. Can you spin around? Can you click and left click and drag on the floor and see if you spin around? I see you're walking sort of facing the wall. Hit X. If you hit the X key, you'll back up. I've never played video games where you have to like move around like this. That's all right. Try, try you to do what? Do you have an X key on your keyboard? Yeah. Hit that X key. Uh... Hold it down. Just Anything? Like, just the regular X? Uh, let's see. Different. I'm sorry, S. Oh. How about that? So you just turn around? Oh, yeah, OK. How about D? A and D. You can go sideways. A and D. Oh, OK, left and right. OK. And then W is forward. OK. If you click on the um, the little question mark down on the bottom right, you can see all of the different commands that you can do. You can have even a cheer and a wave. Okay. And a dance and the space bar is a jump. I'm turning butter. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I normally point myself in the right direction with the mouse by clicking and dragging, and then I use the W key to move forward and the S to turn around and go the other way. W and S for forward and backward. And then on the keyboard, A and D for front and for side to side. Oh, there's some more people. I'm going to wave at you now. Number two is the wave. Number two on the keyboard is a hi. You did it. <laughs> Is 
There you go. Yeah, you got moves. So you can have a big old dance party. Who's this? Who is that in the blue suit? Hi. Hi. Oh, hello. You can also just click on a far part of, of the wall to jump of the floor to jump to some place. And it's called teleporting, I think. You just click on the space that you want to go to. Is everybody okay with the navigational? aspect of this i think that's really the hardest part to get used to uh right away and then what what i'm going to wind up doing is giving you a minute to open your own gallery so what you'll do is leave my gallery it's at the top left hand corner you wind up leaving that gallery and then you're going to go to spaces and you're going to make a new space and when you hit the new space button, some of you haven't done that yet, so we'll take a minute. I'm going to go back to present. There's some weird uh, sound in the background. I can't figure out where it's coming from. It's uh, OK, it could be the ambient sound that's playing in the room. It's like and, a well, it's actually like a talk show. Oh. I don't know, maybe it's huh. it seems like it's coming from my some feed that's in my room, but I don't know. Maybe I maybe I clicked on something and it started okay. playing. Check your other windows too, if you don't if you don't have yeah. a, like, an advertisement maybe going on in a different window. I get that sometimes. With kind so of annoying. <laughs> Yeah, it seems to be playing some sort of advertisement. Oh, okay. So, and you create it in this new space that you've created? Yeah, it seems to be coming from this space. No, I didn't create a space yet. I'm, I think I'm in your space right now. Okay. You know, it it is possible. The outdoor one, yeah, you can get close and you can hear the crackling of the fire and stuff like that. And I think there's a way to turn that on and off too in your settings. Okay. I think it's under ambient noise or 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 something like that. I have to look at okay. it. Okay. But I'm going to encourage everybody now to kind of get out of my room, just leave that one and go back and and try to get a new space as we approach the top of the hour. Okay. And out of all of them, you can choose whatever kind you want and even a blank one. I've done a uploaded a custom space and that's kind of cool too um there's templates available that you can save as once you once you've made something you can save it as a template reuse it um you can buy different ones and those are in the collectibles those are for sale or auction or people that have made them as an actual nft which is a whole different discussion this does support uh nft environment so you could sell your work through here too we can get to that maybe in the lighter part of the presentation but really what you want is environments you can pick one of the basic environments whatever how, you're how do i get out of a, out of a out of a space so you're going to go to leave it's at the top left it should, should be leave with an, a sign that uh, arrow that points to the left 
And if you you want to share your screen. Okay, I just had to hit the back button. Got it. There you go. Okay. Uh, Okay. Now go to a new space. Or or now actually create a space. Create a space. Yeah, when I left that penthouse, penthouse, the uh, advertisement talk show stopped. Oh, okay. (laughs) So uh, so I guess they were just uh, forcing me to listen to something while I was in there. I guess, yeah. That's probably it. Mine jumped right in. And when I go to new space, yeah, you should have, I think, nine different options. So you just pick an option. I'm just going to get the Obsidian Gallery or the Aries, something that I like a nice, clean look. But it doesn't matter. Whatever one you want is going to work. And if you go outdoors, what you're going to, there's a couple different restrict, restrictions that you're going to have as far as space. It doesn't go on forever. In other words, you're going to run into mm-hmm. what looks like a uh, a little polka dotted wall. It's like the outside, uh, the realm. It's like a yellow polka dotted grid. Okay. Um, kind of like the Hunger Games. Kind of like, yeah, and it kind of, yeah, <laughs> kind of closes in on you. <laughs> So I'm doing a nice clean beginning gallery and I'm going to reshare this with you and sort of now once you get into a gallery and and it's all look, I'm going to just say a virgin gallery uh, I'm going to share this with you real quick Let's see Yeah, yeah. Okay So here's my my brand new virgin gallery that looks so nice and clean right there's an option here when you hit the plus button you can add content and this is where it starts getting really really fun so recently these are all of the things that I put into galleries right but you can upload from your device. And the very last one is probably the very first thing that you're going to need to look at. So you're going to need to upload things to put in there so that you'll have something to click and drag. So if I selected from my device and I wanted to go in here and say, OK, I've got, I've got some stuff. like any of these, whatever. The very first thing it's going to say is, do you want it to place it in the frames? You can say, yes, lay it out. Or you could say, no, thanks. And when I say, yes, lay it out, basically what happens, it's a, it's kind of a crapshoot. You don't know where it's going to go. There's where it wound up over here. So what I'm going to do, um, did you see what happened? Um, no, I'm about ready to load something up though right now. Okay, so yeah, mine mine just popped in, but it, it came up over here. I didn't really have a, a chance to say where I wanted to put it, right? Because I hit load it up. So if I go over here to my next one, now I'm in the business. I can say upload art. I can just click right on that thing. And you can see that the one that I just loaded is still there. But I'm going to upload a new one and I'm going to select from my device. And let's say I'm going to double click this one. I'm not even sure what it is, but double click this one right now. And it goes right into the frame. The frame resizes and everything to match what you're at. Now, if you don't like the size of the frame, right, you you have to highlight the thing and then hit information. Okay, you can get all the information. You can put in other information. You can turn off information if you would like to I'm going to I'm going to turn that off for just a second but then if I let's see if I unlock it it comes up locked so that that's the thing that people are going to have struggles with and your students especially when you put it in that way it's automatically locked so I can't do anything with it but if I unlock it I can edit it now 
I can make it bigger. I can scale it up. I can scale it down. I can rotate it. Obviously, I don't want to rotate it, but if you're putting stuff in there that might be a 3D object or whatever, you're going to want to rotate it. I can bring it back or forward. So they don't have to be sitting on the wall. They could be they could be sitting and hanging in free air in your gallery. Yeah. And again, you can once you click on that, you can adjust it with your mouse too. So go ahead. Is there a question? Yeah, and how do you get back to the commands of everything you can do again? Just okay, so that the, the question mark is on the bottom right hand side of your screen. Uh, okay. so the controls. Uh, are right here. And then when you want to add content, so you want to, we're going to go through all of these. Sticky notes, just that. It just puts a little sticky note up on there. Hello. Hi. There it is. Now you got a sticky note. You can put, you can get, put that sticky note anywhere, but it's always just going to be a sticky note. It's just mm -hmm. a little thing. But they can put their name there. They, that's where they can, you know, tell more about their painting or they can give their painting a name other than if they just click on it, unlock it, get the information, and they can put their creator, their artist, how many there might be of it. It might be a series of 100 prints. Give it a different name other, other than the, the photographic. Does everyone Sorry. make their own environment or can you, does everyone make their own environment or can you work on an environment together? I think it's it's what you want it to be as a teacher. So I've shown you two different ones. If I leave this one, if I leave this one and I go to my team environment, this this digital oh, illustration one is a compilation. So I have a team that, that works on this one from three or four different schools in the district. So this, yeah, this this one right, I don't, am I, I think I'm still sharing the same one. So this one, I can go to the videos, travel through the portal, and then we can go see some of Scott Rose's kids' videos here. And there's music going on. And yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to keep on playing around. There's a lot to do. Great, yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's there's a ton. There's a ton here. And I just wanted to give you guys some time um, to load up a gallery. Um, I would like to show you, I'm just going to kind of buzz through here and keep presenting. But, you know, the 3D work, you can also have 3D work in here, too. And when you go ahead and search, um, you know, your students are going to want to do this kind of stuff, like putting kitty cats. And these are things that they just searched for on the Internet and put in there. So you might want to put some rules in there. And, you know, that's up to you. Um, yeah, because they could put on inappropriate stuff. I'm, probably, I'm sure that happens a little bit. Right. Yeah, less like less than you think, though, because it is a digital footprint and if you want to take a picture of it send it on over to the parents house or have a conference with somebody it's right there to talk about so yeah uh, yeah yeah uh, basically i have a, a yeah very very few problems with that um most of these all of this work is my students work everybody turned in their own gallery for me to take a look at and that that makes it real easy for me also to make little links to their their work so all of this stuff has got their own little sort of footprint on it. So, yeah, for better or worse. There's a kid that's put in a lot of time and energy into their room, making all this stuff and making it their their own, I guess, yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you do get that variety. You get that overall sense of, um ownership i think one and, and i give them a little bit of time every day to do to update you know i build that into my curriculum and i was gonna 
talk a little bit about that, but it's going to be different for everybody, however you want to use this. I think it's a great way, like I said in the introduction, it's just a different way to, to share student work, whether that's a piece of writing, a JPEG, um, you know, different links and things. Uh, it works. For what I do, I do graphic design and it works great. And I also do uh, 3D modeling. We use, you know, AutoCAD and Revit and uh, Fusion 360 and SolidWorks and all these things that we can make physical objects. And the physical objects work in here just as well. Export them as an OBJ file. And there's a whole list of files that it will accept. I think is a good another key on this one. Yeah, I just put a little video in and I think it's taking a long time to update. Just a short little that that's right. Um yeah, the more compressed the video, the better. Um I usually do all of my videos down to that 720 YouTube Apple uh format that okay. just compress the heck out of it and you know that usually works best for me. Uh, let's yeah. see, I'm going to pop out of here real quick. If you want to share your link, yeah, Steve, go for it. Great. You're on it. Put your link in the uh, in the chat, and why don't we take about a 10-minute 10, 10 break and let you guys go in the playground and play around, and then I'll be sitting here. If anybody needs to ask a question, I can then demonstrate. Does that sound good? If anybody needs to get um, a water or take a minute, or take another break or whatever, please. We've been at it almost a solid hour. I think we have until what three or so. That's what I had planned on. But if we if we think we had enough, we had enough. We're gonna get get to questions. And I do want to share out and see what you guys have. I would I would like to see maybe what you plan on doing with it in social studies, you know. There's a really cool, uh, there's one person that's into this that's called, I think, Teacher Spatial that I'm going to look for in the meantime here while I'm, while I'm looking for your stuff to get shared out. Great, Megan. Well, what would you say is a more, um, have you used this in science at all? Is there, is there you any know, like science museums you can go visit or something? I, I would bet there is. I know that there's a bunch of links and you can even use it, uh, this place to have like stations maybe. Okay, in this station of the, um, the spatial area of your gallery, it's gonna be all about, let's say, physics, motion, you know, acceleration, or something like that, where you could have dragster video, you could have then a link to PHET, you know, uh, hands on other other spaces that you could go from the gallery then you could have maybe a, a downloadable uh, form that they would fill out in that section of the gallery that would get turned into you maybe answering some questions about the physics or about the acceleration properties or whatever um i haven't tried that but i think it would be pretty easy to make a little link there uh you can make a sticky note with the link on it even yeah. fill out this form for full credit. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, could you do that like you were here. animations of uh, different physical or biological principles or something? Yeah. Um, let me show you. Let's see. Oops. Do, 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 do. Okay. Check physics. Okay. So. Let's say you are you are you looking at the chat? Um, hit that hit that um, link check. in the chat there. Okay. Hit that link in the chat. Oh fit. Yeah, I was thinking of it. I was thinking of you fat. download those download those little guys and pop them in there. You know, that's what I'd be okay. doing left and right, I think. Yeah. Yeah. If I was a science teacher or <laughs> physics or whatever. Oh yeah. That I discovered this when they were putting it together back in the 90s. Um, the university was putting this thing together, and I'm like, this is genius. This is right up there with um, 
uh, what's his name that had the classroom? Uh, oh, classroomanswers.com, uh, uh, East Indian fellow. I can't even remember his name now. It's anyway, somebody will put it in the chat. Uh, yeah, that that FET is awesome. Colorado rocking it. So yeah, I would maybe demonstrate experiment with demon downloading a couple of those things and popping it into your uh, into your gallery okay let's try that and you can have a meeting um i i i do music uh, studio music with a couple of fellows that are in different countries and we meet in my spatial and i share my screen and my screen is the the mixing board so we can hear the mixing board we can adjust you know all of the sounds and all of the patches and equalization that we're doing and effects that we're doing on the same screen and then we can all dance around to it when we're happy and we like it or we can say no we don't like this or whatever and it's kind of a fun way to meet um even across time zones so yeah if you look in your gallery there's a way to share your screen so that's what i do i just share you know you could share a grade book screen you could share a seating chart or a quest of the day a map quest of the day whatever that is i'm dating myself with map quests now here we go um How are we doing, Branson? Hey there. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm ha yeah, I'm having some internet issues. So oh, okay. You know, no problem. I'm fully Good. experience the spatial, uh, but I'm I, I'm 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 there with you, uh, <laughs> and uh, taking notes. Okay. Okay. Is there is there a, a, another sign in sheet you mentioned uh, that we yeah. have to? Yeah, let me let me give you guys the link to the um, slideshow. Oh, okay, I think I, I got I got if that. If you one don't right. have it already, I can put it right in the chat, and then that's the the sign in sheet and everything. Great. And then there's an evaluation, and the, that's all on this on that slide, the first slide. I believe so. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Mm hmm. Let's see here. We did uploading. We did navigating, hyperlinking. The auto gallery is kind of neat. There's a way to get a bunch of pictures in at once. That's kind of save you some time. The video, I think, might be a little bit slow. I'm going to say that's a downfall, probably, of the thing. Um, but if you upload to YouTube and make a link to that video, that also works. Uh, there's always a way around, work around. Hopefully everybody's having luck uploading something, um, even if it's just something that you have on your desktop or a picture that you downloaded off the internet or whatever, your favorite food, whatever. Um, I just can't think of a limit to what could be represented on the format. It's almost like you know learning to make a website what do you put on a website? Just about anything. So this is kind of a pre-made, uh, pre-slugged uh, gallery for you to present. And I think the experience sort of speaks for itself. If you're lucky enough or unlucky enough to have a VR headset in your life, um, it also plugs into the VR. So you can just sit in your chair and look around with your head and move your head and look through the glasses and it works just fine. I've actually seen that work i do not have a headset they don't work with my my brain very well i get 
I get a little nauseous with the headset on. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I don't do VR. I like I do screen VR. Yeah. Um. My my young son, though, however, would love to live in a headset. I think if we had one for him, that's another reason we don't have one. The very last slide um, has to do with, uh, oh, and the links that I have in there on my slideshow should take you to the actual help desk of um, Spatial. It's nothing that I reinvented. The very last slide has a whole bunch of sort of um, if you if you have a minute, check out the very last slide. There's a feedback, uh, my email to connect, and some place for you to share out what you've done. And also, there's a like a little index of stuff that has to do with um, this world of actually marketing and selling digital art in the NFT world, um, for what it's worth. This is sort of a also a, a great way to represent your your collection of you know maybe maybe rarities that you have out there in the world of digital artwork. Um, and there's a way to upload that stuff too, and your upload area just says NFTs. And then if you have your your wallet connected, you can. Boop, Spike them right up there and show the world what you've got. So when you download a FET file, do you just download the URL or do you actually download all the files? Um, I think you wind up, I'm going to go click on one right here. I have like a states of matter one. Okay. Yeah, I'm just looking at the first thing that says download. And what I'm going to do is, it looks like it's an HTML file, right? Yeah, I think it is. So it should play that, right? Maybe. Uh, it yeah, I'm going to open it up and see what happens in Chrome. It should, yeah, it opens it right up in Chrome. Okay. But it is it, yeah. showing that it's a file that is a, a file that exists on my actual C drive. So, yeah. Might be better just to have a link and and you know I would yeah yeah. So how do you put a link into it? I guess it's interesting. I haven't experimented very much with that. Upload? Oh, when you, when you click on it. Oh, I see. I'm I'm going through one that looks like lenses right now, and I'm, it's working great on my computer, but I'm. I'm going to try to put it in the spatial, see what happens. Yeah, I'm playing with that too. For some reason, I can't okay. get it to quite go over. Yeah. Yeah, it might just be a more of a link than um, on that one. That would be really slick if you could just drag and drop it in there. It'd be nice. Have it represent or play right in your gallery. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. And what's NFTS? Is that is that some kind of file system, Ethereum or Polygon? Um, and you, are you in spatial right now? Um, NFTS. Let me see. I missed it. Upload, and it that's, it says recent NFTS integrations or upload. Hmm. Let me see. There's a lot of possibilities. <laughs> There's just a ton of possibilities. Exactly. Um, going to go back into my room that I have control over here.
Yeah, so you could, we could turn this into a science museum of interactive science. That'd be kind of fun. I can just click on different you know, things and be sucking. It's really when the kids get a hold of it, they they have all of these same questions. So the very first one of the first things I do is I post up all of the files that are acceptable files. I had a link to that around here somewhere. I would like to maybe go try and find that. I'm going to try to add some content here. Yeah, you can you can integrate it with your Google Drive as well. Okay, maybe that's how you have to do it. I noticed that. So if, if, yeah, that, like, if that is in your Google Drive, that might work better. Yeah, it's not showing the HTML file. It doesn't look like it's going to it's want to not, deal with that. Yeah. Yes, because that would just take you to an external website, which would be what interesting. You, you could do. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because an HTML you, file would basically run an external website. It would turn it into like a screen, which would be interesting. Exactly. So what I would think about doing is maybe do a screen recording of yourself performing the experiment and then a link oh uh, yeah you know what i mean so if you if you made yeah. a little mini screen recording from zoom or what or a loom or whatever um or just a screen capture this is the yeah you know setup that i'd like you to go on fed and set it up to look like this take a screenshot and then put it up there with the link then they they'd have a reference point and a a way to go to it that's yeah. a good that's a good medium ground yes <laughs> find a way to get there right now i'm looking at the kind of files we can upload um on the question mark there it is okay so you can get yeah glb gitf these are like 3d files and stuff 3d models and one really cool uh, people are gonna freak out but let's see there is a those are i put in the chat all of the acceptable file types that might be something to copy and paste in your notes if you want oh i see yeah the top ones are 3d files that we deal with all the time in um autocad and uh uh, SolidWorks and things like that. We can export as all those different ones. OBJ is the easiest one. That gives you a 3D object, um, like an STL file for printing 3D printers. MOV, movie, AVI. GIFs are the probably the most compact ones, the short little make a GIF out of it and put up a GIF. That's what I would suggest. The rest of them are going to be larger files like mp4s and the movie and avis are larger usually let's see yep they they go with both the NFTs are both Ethereum and Polygon. And all you have to do is connect your wallet and pop it in there. There's PowerPoint, Excel files, and PDFs. Cool. Yeah, and I think anything, basically anything in your um, Google Drive, if you if you integrate your Google Drive in there with it, I think that's really the key. Yeah, I'm gonna try to upload a PowerPoint. I'm gonna see how that works.
How's everybody feeling? Been sitting here for a little bit now, a little over an hour, almost an uh, hour and 15 minutes or so. How are we doing? Is everybody kind of getting that, getting their feet wet? Yeah, I'm just, it's going slow, but I'm having fun. There's a lot to do. Can you see students kind of jumping on this and embracing this? How about middle school students? Do you think it's too much for them or should they be able to pretty much swing it? Great, Megan. Great. I like that. Great. Yeah. I think like you would have to give a lot of time. But it might be the kind of thing they would do a lot at home when they got home if they were excited about it. <laughs> you know. And mm -hmm. they would probably they would probably catch up, they would probably figure it out faster than we do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, I'm the lag is what's happening, right? If if you're at school and you're on a, a everybody's on like a wireless network and you're trying to do this, maybe uh, you know with a group of students on Chromebooks in a wireless network, and yeah, it could you're gonna have to test it. Um, I'm fortunate in my classroom we have desktop computers and. We have pretty good setup, and they're all going into the Ethernet. No, we all, we're, we're hardwired in, but everybody's not that way. But you could do it at home. You could do it on your phone. You know, you can download the app on your phone, and depending on your service and that, you can work right off your phone, which is cool. I show people my gallery on my phone for my 10-second elevator speeches all the time. I just have it ready to go and say here's how what, what we're doing i showed the miss uh Deneen gus our superintendent I, I caught her in an elevator speech like situation and showed her and she's like bring it over to the office we want to see more and it's like okay maybe maybe other people will be interested in this so uh yeah it is laggy, and I'm, I'm, that's the problem, Stephanie. I think that's our biggest um, thing to overcome in our district in general is like poor internet service, like in the classroom for devices. I don't know what the deal is. I, so just bandwidth for a thousand students or two thousand students using it all at the same time. It's just the bandwidth issue, right? I mean, and. In my classroom, I can't take a picture with my phone and send it to the principal if there's an issue. Um, it, we can't do pictures. It just won't go um, unless I'm on my own network. And, you know, I get stuff that's sent to me from Chuck Felice next door in the wood shop. Uh, and they arrive on my phone when I get home on my network. It goes, ding, oh, you got a picture. Send it at 10 this morning. Yeah, and then they have an equity issue where they do it at home too, because some people have a lot better internet at home than others. That that's a priority the district has set on the uh, on the internet. They're they don't want kids sending pictures around, watching uh, you know all this stuff, and it, that just eats up the bandwidth. So the district has put a low priority on it. So if you want to go through send through pictures, you're gonna have to get off the school's uh, Wi-Fi and go on your own private. Uh, uh, telephone network. I agree, Steve. That's that's basically what they're what they're worried about. Yeah, yeah, sounds sounds about right. Well, I I think that um, I've just about exhausted all of the things that I had to say. I would encourage you to, to take a look. I'm going to be updating the slideshow, the very last slide um, on the slideshow. I've put a couple of new things on there. Um, And also a link. There's another one that's very similar to this that's called On Cyber. 
and anything that has a dot io after it is usually sort of interacted interactive on c y b e r dot io okay so thingverse uh sketchfab cgi warehouse unity blender metamask coinbase object meta decentral land is a huge one spatial sandbox um crypto voxel is another one that i know the the founders of crypto voxels i think there's an s on that crypto voxels and on cyber.io those are some just some jump off points to other like nft 3d sort of galleries and things and um I would encourage you to maybe take a look at that last slide, make a note of some of those things, and it can be a jump off point for you to add some more vocab to your um, metasphere experience, I guess, or knowledge base. Uh, I've been at this probably a year and a half since, um, or right about the beginning of the pandemic, um, I started getting into making and collecting and um, trading art online through nft and ethereum and tezos and polygon and all that business and it's been a fun little side journey for me it hasn't been super profitable but it hasn't been uh, uh devastating to me either it's been kind of fun and i've met a lot of really good artists i have a a group of you know fantastic digital artists that i bring into the classroom we share ideas and work and collaborate and uh <laughs> we're making we're making skateboard decks and we're doing all kinds of new art for for people that it's kind of on the side and it's just a, a fun way to share your work it, whoops music art uh film photography especially photography um there are some wonderful photography um meta galleries out there and you can you can set up a, a paypal you know, you can link your PayPal to it. You can do a lot of different things or your your Zelly or whatever you use to collect, uh, make money from that. Or like I said, your Ethereum wallet or your MetaMask or whatever it is that you do if you're into that sort of thing too. I think I'm nearing or just about nearing the the end of the presentation, but I'm happy to stick around. I'd like to give you guys some time to work and share out and talk. Uh, maybe take a minute and express in the chat box how you think you might be able to use this thing. Um, also, if you have any suggestions for me as a presenter, I'm always interested in hearing uh, feedback. I have very thick skin, so please don't pull any punches with me as far as um, my presentation skills go. Uh, I like to learn and I like to experiment and uh, I like presenting to other teachers too. It's, it's a challenge for me and it's a lot different than presenting with students because I feel like I can skip a lot of the nonsense and get right to the nitty gritty and uh, then answer back answer backload questions that fill in the blanks if hopefully you have a few to to share out to if you if you need to ask questions you won't be shy yeah notice when you try to download this um it says for age ages 17 plus so that's like if you download it to your computer spatial yeah i think is, that's is because that of the whole nft aspect of it and because it hooks up a, a cyber wallet to it oh. so yeah that's that's generally the the threshold of um you know people signing contracts and doing business and things like that so yeah so I, you can I get have, people to actually trade money on it is that oh yeah what that means with cyber wallet yeah sure i mean if, if you click on that first one that that we went to um my my gallery is filled with nfts and you could buy one of those right off me through there you could just click on it and buy it and the money would go directly into my cyber wallet my uh, metamask wallet okay. what he would be the wiser <laughs> in fact um 
there's there's a cryptocurrency called Tezos. Right now, it's trading at about a dollar fifty per coin, a dollar per coin, roughly a dollar fifty. But it's gone up as high as eight dollars. And a long time ago, I had a couple people donated about a hundred coins to me, um, and I give those out to students for rewards so that they can go ahead and and buy stuff and create and trade art on the market and I'll, I'll i'll put a link um that's kind of fun if for you for you artists out there um um Okay, so this one's interesting because copy. So this one's interesting because students can actually wheel and deal in the art world for very little money, and they can actually get what's called a Tezos wallet or a Kukai wallet, um, and they can hook it through their email. So they don't even need a bank account to start doing this. They would need a bank account to cash out, and that's where the 18 and over thing is. But there's nothing stopping anybody from collecting or, or trading or buying or selling artwork. Um, and the cool thing about it, I don't know how much people really know or want to know about this. It's not really part of my presentation. But if, if for example, this object.com, you can shop for artwork that only costs like two dollars or three dollars in real money, um, all the way up to thousands and tens of tens of thousands of dollars. And and I've had some of my my slick seniors and junior students actually flip artwork and make money on you know different pieces of digital art. And the cool thing is is that uh, there's a residual sales factor involved. So it's like royalties. If you create a piece of art and sell it for 10 bucks, you can put a 10% royalty factor on that. So every time it sells, you get 10 bucks. So if somebody flips it for 20 or 10%, so if somebody flips it, you get a you get paid into your wallet every time somebody sells or resells your art. Pretty nice. It's like mm -hmm. a record deal. It's like a royalty. So for artists, it's a big deal. I mean, I grew up in the art community and we've never had the opportunity to get secondary sales on our work where record albums and stuff like that happens all the time. Book sales happens all the time. But if you sell a piece of art, it's gone. <laughs> that person has it. And then if they sell it, it's gone from that person. And with this way of keeping track, it's, it's all computerized. So you could sell a piece of art or 10 editions of a piece of art, and every 10 editions has a residual resale value of up to 25%, you can actually start making some dough. That's what we're doing. Yeah, how, do, how does that, could we get into trouble as educators with underage minors, uh, like getting into cryptocurrency and buying things? And I guess they could start selling their stuff to build up their crypto and then buy other things. Is that kind of what could happen? Would, I, guess? I would be, yeah, I wouldn't be upset, um, you know, to find out that my son or daughter was selling their art um, online and building up a crypto wallet. That wouldn't bother me. But if, if it did bother somebody, I guess that's what I put out there in the very beginning. It's not, this is not an assignment. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. I'm yeah. not telling you to go try and you know play the stock market. I mean, think about it this way: if if you want to play the stock market too, same thing. You can go online and play <laughs> yeah. the stock market in your social studies class or your economics class, but it's not for real money, you know. Yeah, um, this is not for real money either, unless they've invested money. If I give them a little bit to start off with, yeah, yeah, it's kind of like planting a seed. Um, yeah. And, and the way I look at it is, why not? I mean, the kids are making beats. They're selling their beats online. They could put their uh -huh. beats. You can make your beats into an NFT as well and put it in your gallery and have people shopping in your gallery and listening to your beats um, or your film or your 
commercial or whatever it is, you know, to, to build your portfolio. And that's really what it's about is a, a, a portfolio building tool, I think, more than anything. So yeah, there's a lot of different ways to go with it. Um, if anybody would like um, any of the information, it's all being, all of the links and everything on the side chat are gonna be recorded as well. So you can go back and look at this recording um, online. And uh, and then I'll put my email. If anybody would like to get a hold of me through the email, there's a, there's also a contact thing on the last slide if you've downloaded the slideshow, but it's Okay, we have my email down there. The last slide also has sort of a, um, um, what do you call it, a uh, feedback. So that is one way that I'm going to be able to um, learn from this experience. And getting feedback from you is super important. So I'd appreciate it if you would take a minute um, at the end, which I believe is going to be coming up upon us. and. Uh, Fill out the feedback loop. Email me your, your connections. Mio, I'm looking at your spatial thing right now. Super cool. I like the whole, you, you went with a, the, the, big, the big gallery there. I'm in there. Yeah, I like that, Mio. I'm walking around your gallery right now, too. Yep. Thanks for the link. And again, this will be a work in progress, right? You got plenty of room to, to play around in here. It took me about two weeks to fill up my gallery that looks like this with student work, with like everybody that was involved. And um, there we go. Yeah. And also remember to lock stuff down, OK? So when you, when you put up a piece, there's a little lock on it. That's cool artwork, really nice. Um, make sure you hit the lock, otherwise students can move it around or delete it. <laughs> yeah, they won't usually do that, but they can. Okay. Nice. Now that's in my, my list of places that I've visited, too. When you go back and leave, it'll pop you into the places that you've explored and spaces that you've seen. Here's a, another quick little tip before we get going. Um, if you have an iPhone, or I don't know what other kind of phone, but the iPhone with this LiDAR, it has that little white thing. That's LiDAR, that's actually a scanner. So you can make 3D scans with your iPhone and actually put objects into the thing too. So one of my one of my things is I do 3D scans. So with my iPhone, I have a, a, um, a program called Scanverse. I'll put it in there. I for, um, iPhone LiDAR. And the program app is called um, Scanverse. Check it out. It's amazing. Scanverse. I went to a um, uh, sandcastle building contest in Carmel, and I got out my scanner, and I actually 3D scanned their sandcastles. And the guy says, what are you doing? Are you making a movie? I said, no. And then I showed him, and he just lost it. I mean, here on my phone, I had a perfect 3D scan of uh, a sandcastle. And it was shaped like a lobster. It was really neat. Yep. So Scanverse is something. Yeah, this is an interesting um, correlation to what students are doing with all their, you know, what is it, the uh, online multiple uh, OMRPGs or multiple role-playing games. They're yeah, yeah. building their own environment, essentially, 
So it's a, like kind of like Fortnite or something like that, but it's but it's more it could be more academically based, you know, than some of these just shoot 'em up games and stuff that they play. Absolutely. The whole the whole Minecraft um phenomenon is really I mean, my son can sit down and play Minecraft for hours and just build this realm of you know things and and they uh, can talk with each uh, other too, right? Um they do. Uh, my my son is eleven going into sixth grade and he has a friend that just moved to Australia and they start talking with each other after he gets off school, which is about 9 30, 10 o'clock at night here. He's off school the next day. <laughs> ah. So it's already Friday afternoon over there and uh, he'll be on the phone playing these games with them. And uh, just like they're next door neighbors, you know, it's really interesting. Wow. No lag at all, just straight up fun time. And they're just walking around these spatial environments or they're just doing other things, yeah. Yeah, they have their avatar and they're they have a quest that they're working on or they're they're making a game or they're doing something. And so they, they you can build their own quest into the into the spaces, I guess. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Especially on um Minecraft, they do a lot of that. They make different puzzles and games. In Minecraft, yeah. 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 I don't I don't know much about Minecraft. <laughs> that boat sailed without me, yeah. but uh, I do keep my pulse on on this other type of gallery and um, you know, metaspace and things like that. Uh, that's where I've been the last pandemic. That and um, yep. I also have a, uh, <laughs> I'm going to put in a plug. I work with an improv group called pantheater.com, and please come see our shows. <laughs> uh, that's going to be the end of the show today. If you guys want to write that down and uh, look us up, and the shows are free online Saturdays and uh, Fridays Pan usually. Pan Theater. Pan Theater. That's out of Oakland. We do live shows in San Francisco. I'm going to be doing a two-night stand in San Francisco at the Exit Theater on the 26th, I believe, and 27th of August, Friday and Saturday, last Friday and Saturday of August. It'll be our, our follow-up show to three that we did already up there in San Francisco, and we're starting to get big. So come on out and see us. Have some fun. <laughs> That's my last shameless plug. If anybody has any questions or anything, hang out. Uh, I'm good for another 10 minutes or so if anybody wants to. Otherwise, um, thanks for coming. I would really appreciate your time and your your being here, being present. And um, it's going to be fun getting back to school. Try it out. Throw it out there. Have a fun Friday uh, gallery walk. And um, let me know how it goes through the email at some point during the year. It would be awesome. Okay. okay. Yeah, thank you, James. So yeah, thank you. you're welcome, Megan. Thank you. Um, I'm very enthusiastic. <laughs> and if anybody needs to get a hold of me, send me an email. If you have a question about it, it's not a problem. Um, if you come up with something interesting, give me a shout out. Tell me how it's going, and then we'll see you guys hopefully on the next round or or at a at a convention or something soon. Shout out to all the middle school teachers out there too. <laughs> special place in my heart for you guys. All right. You're excused. You have a link to the uh, the, the spatial slides and docs. Fill out the, the feedback form and stick around if you have any questions at all. I'll be here for another 10 minutes unless everybody leaves. All right. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Uh-huh. Thanks for sharing out your links and being such a good participate. Matt, appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't quite get my my shared uh, environment out, but I, I did upload something. I'm going to play with it some more. 
Yeah, yeah, that's all right. I, I was just more or less commenting on your participation. That was great having you in, involved. Appreciate that. Okay. No, oh, good. Thanks. Are you ready to call it? Or did you want to hang out for a little bit longer? Yeah, I'll call it. I'm just doing the guy. I'm just doing the evaluation for him. So. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. Yep. I'll sign out. Well, all right. All right. Have all a good right. one. Then. Talk we'll to you see later. You later. Yep. <laughs> bye, bye bye. And that was our presentation, folks. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the metaverse.